Hey guys, welcome back. I'm so excited for today's video. We have a full brunch menu. We're making croque monsieur, which is a, a French ham and cheese sandwich. It's very rich. So we're gonna have a light salad with that, as well as some delicious candied bacon that is out of this world. And today's video is sponsored by Mr. Black. So huge thank you to them. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to make the best espresso martini at home using Mr. Black. So let's go ahead and jump into today's video. If you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you go. It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you on a Friday, halfway out of the door Played around with a ton of different settings, but ultimately, instead of covering the entire table, I decided to just run the tablecloth down the middle just to let some of that wood peek through. And then I went in and added my dishes, which I ended up getting some new dishes recently. I absolutely love them. I felt like I just wanted to add a little bit of color and interest to my table. I think the dishes give the table a very formal feeling and I wanted to kind of make it a little more laid back. So I incorporated some linen napkins. I did tuck the silverware kind of like in the middle. And then I had some leftover twine from the holidays. I went ahead and tied some baby's breath to that. And I thought I was gonna place them on top of the dishes like this. I thought that was a really pretty look, but ultimately I decided to kind of lay it off to the side so that I could have this little pink bowl for yogurt, which you guys will see. I did a little yogurt station a little bit later. <music> First up, we're making our espresso martini. These are so good. If you're a coffee lover, you're gonna absolutely love these. The key ingredient to this martini is Mr. Black, which is a cold brew coffee liqueur, and it's made with specialty coffee. So it's going to give you that delicious coffee flavor, super smooth. You're not gonna get any of that bitterness or acidity that you might get with other liqueurs. And to make it, you're gonna mix 1.5 ounces of Mr. Black, 0.5 ounces of vodka and one ounce of espresso, or you could use cold brew. And there's two tricks to making the perfect espresso martini. One, you wanna make sure to use large chunks of ice, and then you wanna make sure to shake it vigorously for at least 30 seconds. Like my arm got a little bit of a workout when I was done, but it is totally worth it because shaking it is what's going to give it that delicious foam that you guys are seeing. I typically like a little drizzle of cream and cinnamon on my espresso martini. So I decided to incorporate that into these really cute eyes. I used this little mold for it. I just added some edible rose petals, some cinnamon, and then some vanilla sweet cream. And I froze that overnight. So as you're sipping on your martini, it slowly melts and it keeps your martini cold. I'm telling you guys, this is so good. Definitely pick up Mr. Black for your next martini and enjoy with friends. So when you're hosting, I always recommend to have something that your guests can kind of nibble on or something that they can kind of munch on while they're enjoying their cocktail. So I love making these little like yogurt stations. I've made these for the holidays in the past. You can definitely wash your berries and things like that the night before just to cut down on that prep time. For the little yogurt station, I just took a little cake stand. I added a bowl to the middle and I just filled that with my favorite vanilla yogurt. I added blackberries, also strawberries, some granola for some crunch, also some white chocolate chips because they go really well with that raspberry, some nuts, Nuts and these little mini donuts that I found at Whole Foods and I just think it looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell you guys how you can make the croque monsieur and the candy bacon at the same time in the oven so that it all comes out hot and fresh. So we're gonna start off with the candy bacon. You're gonna make this rub, which makes it really spicy and sweet. It is so good, you guys. And you're just gonna take any bacon of your choice. I should have probably lined my pan with like parchment paper. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyways, lay your bacon down, rub both sides generously until all of that rub is used up, flip it, do the same thing. And then you're gonna set that bacon to the side and start working on your croque monsieur, which I am so sorry, I'm probably butchering that name. 
So the croque-monsieur typically has a bechamel sauce, which is made with butter and flour on the stove, but we're actually gonna be using this creme fraiche mixture in place of the bechamel, just to cut down time and to make things a little bit easier. But trust me, you guys, I've tried it both ways and they are both very delicious and they're very similar. You're gonna take your creme fraiche, mix some Parmesan cheese into it and also some bouillet and just give it a good mix. Now we're gonna start assembling our sandwiches. I found this really good croissant bread at Whole Foods. It's so good, but you can definitely use any type of white bread that you want. We're gonna add Dijon mustard to one side and then butter to the other side. The Dijon mustard is like essential in my opinion because this is a very rich sandwich and it just kind of helps cut through that richness. Then we're gonna add that creme fraiche mixture. Then we're gonna top that with ham. And we're gonna add Emmental, which is kind of like a Swiss cheese. I actually ended up finding it at Whole Foods. a softer bread you can make an indentation on the top with a spoon mine was a little bit too thick though so i ended up kind of taking some of that out and you can save that for like breadcrumbs later you want like an indentation so you can scoop some of that creme fraiche mixture on top and then you're gonna layer it with more gruyere cheese now that your sandwich is fully assembled we're gonna go ahead and put the bacon in now that the oven is preheated and we're gonna set a 10 minute timer and in those 10 minutes we can start assembling our salad Just wash and prep those ingredients. I like to kind of keep mine in the fridge so it stays cold. And then we're making a very simple vinaigrette. We're taking some white wine vinegar, salt, Dijon mustard, and some extra virgin olive oil. And we're kind of emulsifying that. I'm using my little uh, blender that I use for my coffee, but you could definitely use a whisk. You just have to whisk it really, really fast. And just do that as you slowly pour the oil in. You guys will see, you get this really thick consistency and it's absolutely delicious. I could literally drink this dressing. It's that good. And once your 10 minute timer goes off, you're gonna take that bacon and put it on the bottom rack. You're gonna take your sandwich and put that on the top rack and then cook it for another 10 minutes. Now, once you have put that in the oven, you can go ahead and start serving your salad. And I like to just do the greens with the tomato and then do that dressing drizzled on top with some crispy onions. It's so good. Then go ahead and plate everything else once it is fully cooked. Thank you to Mr. Black for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out. And until next time, bye.